Aloha Kohala. It is 3.01 here on March 16th, 2022. You're listening to KNKRLP 96.1 FM Kohala. This is Isla Allgood. I am just waiting for my co-host to uh, step in here any second, Mikkel Anna. Uh, she's on her way. And then we're going to get going with Intuitive Talk Story today. If you have any questions uh, or, or ideas you'd like us to talk about on Intuitive Talk Story, please call at 884-5657. That's 884-5657. Let's have music for a moment, and then we'll be right Welcome back. That was just a little interlude so that we could get settled here. Mikkel and I. Go Aloha. Ahead. Pull that microphone close, honey. Okay, there we go. Mikkel is wearing a very uh, powerful necklace today, and I was just asking her about it before we got started. And uh, yeah, so we're ready to go. We're ready to talk about high heart, passion, letting go the equinox. So where would you like to start today? Well, aloha, everybody <laughs> out there. I'm Mikkel Anna. Happy, beautiful Wednesday to you if you're tuning in or another day if this ends up being a replay. Yes. But today we are live and here we are and it, the equinox is upon us. And if you've been following any of my work, you may um, be seeing that I've been talking about passion, ruling reason and leading up to this equinox about letting go and surrendering any limiting beliefs, assumptions, opinions that may still be percolating in the being, in the brain, in the mind-body-spirit connection. And what does that mean? We want to kind of talk about that a little yeah. bit. What, what do those look like? What are those kind of things? But leading up to the equinox in the effort to peel away things so that we can set in where you're really wanting to go, that we talked about that two, 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 two activation at one point yes. in our show. And uh, we've all been experiencing a lot of energy coming in, a lot of a magical energy and energy to help us move into greater harmony. So when great, great, beautiful energy comes into play, it means we have to get into alignment with it. Mm -hmm. So it means we have to drop all the things that aren't going to fit into this beautiful new energy. We don't need these lower energies, these these um, more negative thought patterns, negative programs. Mm -hmm. We don't need to, these denser energies any longer in our field. It's time to clean out the old stories, solidify that, and move into this really exciting new time. Yes, and that makes me think about how when sometimes we have expectations and that need to let go of expectations. So um, I was thinking about something where I was talking to a friend and uh, he was talking about, he was the kind of person who really did not like to spend time outside and would say, no, I don't want to go for a walk. I don't want to go to the, do this. Whatever it was that was outdoors didn't interest him. And now he has a five-year-old child who just loves to be outside like all the time. And he's outside with the child a lot of the time. And I said, how do you feel about that? And he's like, I love being outside. So he let go of what he considered who he was or part of who he was so that he could be present with somebody else and have another kind of experience. And through that has gotten so much positivity from it. And I think that's the thing about letting go of what we think something's supposed to be, how our day's supposed to go, how our anything's supposed to go. And magic can happen. And then if you are aware enough, you may even notice that the magic is happening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that kind of an expectation and an assumption mm. because we assume a lot of things all the time. If you really pay attention to what you're thinking, little tiny assumptions, it could be as simple as deciding what someone's like based on what clothes they're wearing. Oh, yeah. Right? Like yeah. you see someone and you think you know who that person is because of what they're wearing. That's a huge assumption. But, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Let's go back to that old one. But that's a really easy, clear one to see. And how often we do those small little assumptions. They could be small things. You know, I, I assumed you, you, you know, the door was locked, so I assumed you had the key. Uh, you know, yeah. making assumptions can get us in trouble. Now we've got our keys locked in the car, whatever that is. So I just actually made an assumption not long ago when I was with children, and I assumed my wallet was in the car, but it wasn't. It was in the shopping cart. 
Oh. And I assumed it was not when the child rolled it back, whom I was hanging with. Oh, wow. And that, therefore, wallet gone. Hello. Yeah. Really quick lesson on assumptions for yeah. me last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, it turned out okay, too. It turned right? out great, and I'll say why. Because I talk to you all all the time. I actually thought it was perfect because it gave me the opportunity to go, all right, well, um, I can't actually reach any in my bank or anything between 9 and 6. There, wasn't, I didn't, there was no apparent way to freeze anything, make anything happen. Someone had already charged over $600 on the American Express. Mm. And I'm thinking they're going to go to my bank accounts and, you know, all that. But instead of getting freaked out and stressing and having a horrible evening, I chose to pray over everything. I chose to cover it with light to really walk in like, this is a beautiful family that has this wallet. They have three kids. They got new pots and pans, great new clothes. Maybe they really needed something. They really needed it. You know, Amex is going to cover it. And and they could just feel like they got got away with it. That's good. They needed it. It was a blessing. They threw the wallet away. And now it's done. They yes. won't online shop all night. You know, so just creating yeah. envisioning what I wanted it to be mm-hmm. and trusting and mm-hmm. allowing and then letting my mind do something different. So then I went to another activity, like drove me drop that, give thanks. And then I got up at 610 and froze everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you make a really good point because you kind of take us through it, which is you had those initial like, uh-oh what's going to happen? And then it's, okay, where am I going to go with this? Am I going to keep going on the, uh, oh, or am I going to, what, what, uh, where, where are my tools? And you right. go, and you go to what your tools are, right? which might be different than somebody else, sure. but they're, they're tools that help you. And we each have things that we can do to help us get to a place where we're out of worry. We're out of fear. We're out of uh ohs and And oh my gods, and we're into this place of, okay, what do I want to have happen now? Because it's already done. It's already gone. Your wallet was gone. What do I want to have happen? And then you shifted that. That's a big shift. Right. You shifted, and that shifts the energy. And let's talk about energy for a moment, because it's one thing to make yourself feel good with this process, but you're shifting energy so that the energy that's going out there is creating the kind of reality you want to see happen. Well, and this goes back to, well, you know what I'm going to say. Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there's nobody out there, Isla. So, yeah, there's nobody out there. We are the only ones here creating a reality. In essence, it's your movie player number one. So from your viewpoint, I was... I, c- I could have created that to be a gnarly situation. A drama. I could have created a very you could big, have drama. Had a big drama. It could have been like ruined my week. It could have been yeah. like something I dealt with every day. It could yeah. have, you know, it could have been that mm-hmm. had I fed that energy. Mm-hmm. So back to that, well, the true power is that whatever I'm giving my energy to is really what I'm asking to bring more of. Right. So if I'm giving my energy to it. So when we go, you know, I, I, we keep we think about things sometimes that you really don't want. You know, right. you think about, well, I just don't want to see that person. You just don't want to see that person. Oh. I don't want to see them. I don't have nothing to do with them. Yeah. And then what happens? You see them everywhere yeah. because you're thinking about not seeing them, but all the universe hears is that person, you know, and the, or whatever the situation is. It's right. just an example of how we wherever we focus our energy energy flows to that so we want to start by remembering it's just all an inside job so if that's the case it doesn't matter what is going on a a lot of times people say well you know well I I hear you but then but what about this I mean you know we're now we're talking about like you know this involves kids and electricity I mean whatever it could name anything school whatever is if that somehow now that's out of your experience and somehow that's now something different. Like these spiritual things apply like prayer. People often say, well, prayer is fine and good and all, but this is serious. Yeah. Oh, so it was great in these other realms, but right. now it's not great here. So that's a It's con- not great for the wallet, but it's, it's okay to pray for somebody else's health to get better. Like, right, there are certain... There's Certain a conditional people, parameter people make around rules it. around yeah, it. We do. We make we make up stuff. Where something works and where it doesn't. But if we go yeah. like just foundational across the board, mm. well, energy flows where attention goes. Oh, well, there's nobody out there. I am another yourself. If we go to these I am that I am, there is nothing you, there is only one thing. We've dropped back to that. You give your mind back to that. Give your mind something to do. Mm-hmm. Hey mind, uh if I am that I am, and there's nobody out there, then what you're thinking about can't possibly be true. 
Right. And then you're not blaming somebody else for anything because you realize that you're somehow part of the, you're the movie. I've co-created that. I've created the situation. I, uh, you know, just the other day I had a great, you know, reflection with a friend who's very, has some similar fragments, some similar pieces. And I thought, well, and it wasn't the most fun interaction, but it was a great interaction because we both walked away going, huh, thanks for the reflection. I guess I do that. Hmm, mm-hmm. maybe I ought not do that so much anymore. That's mm-hmm. not really working for me. Now mm-hmm. I see why. Thank you. So if we let allow ourselves to see that the things that kind of go, wait a minute, what's that? Oh, that's something I'm still navigating or something I'm still doing, which is why it bugs me in right. someone else, right? And so we can then go, aha, yay, I get to like take that and go, I'm done. <laughs> right. And it could be uh, we're triggered by something somebody does. And maybe there's something in us that hasn't been healed around something that we have to look at. And th- today I was thinking about things that are kind of bigger, uh, big, um, where there's abuse, where there's harm caused to somebody. And I, I was kind of walking. I, was wa- I wasn't kind of. I was walking <laughs> outside around the trees and, uh, and, and kind of talking And um, what came to me about that is sometimes the source of that may be beyond the scope of our knowledge right here and right now. It may be a past life thing that we, or a contract we made before we got here, that we were going to go through these six things, and that's one of the six things. And so we might, we may, may or may not know that. And you're, you're, Ah. you're looking at me in a way, and I, I say that because... I'm cautious about people uh, taking blame to themselves. Oh, well, why did I? Sh- no why did blame I ever? Why did I create this? In, I would never create this situation in my life. And it's like, you know what I mean? Uh, I hear where you're going with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, because I know that you're very empathic and very mm. sensitive, and and you're taking it now. You're taking blame. Now we're going to blame. So, see, blame is where you go because of your own place, right? Where you think, I don't Mm. want anyone to feel bad. Yes. I don't want anyone to blame themselves. Yes. You're feeling, you know, hey, but no one's advocating blame here, period. There's no... On any side. On any level. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Just no blame. Take that little, just more so, let's just take that out. Because what we're saying is responsibility. This is a different concept. So responsibility means... I, I'm responsible for how I move, move myself and, and through the world. Right. I'm responsible for my choices. I'm responsible for my decisions. Right. So therefore, I, there's, you know, there's action and reaction, right? If I do this, if I put the milk on the edge of the table, it's going to fall. So there's just consequence in my natural uh, right. my natural everyday life of choices that I make. Mm-hmm. So when we say that, there's nobody out there. This is happening. It's meaning that somewhere in our field, and you're right, you're correct, that many things, <laughs> in fact, are not oh, in your conscious mind. Yeah. Uh, they're not from this moment. Everything is not really. In fact, everything that you're experiencing in this moment, every trigger, is from somewhere else. It's not the thing in front of you, pretty much mm. ever. Mm. It's always somewhere else. It could be childhood in this life it's shown up in this lifetime in some form prior to now for Mm. you to find a morsel to find it you do not actually have to have conscious recollection Mm. of past life activity Mm -hmm. in order for you to find morsels to set yourself free Mm -hmm. because the clues are all here it's just that it's a loop so You've been doing it a long time. Right. So when we talk then about past lives, you're like, oh, it's not like it's it's like a pain. We we it's pain loops that literally we're navigating for thousands of years. You're all different characters, all different people, all and maybe the same mm-hmm. characters all you know in all different scenarios. Same loop, same pain loop, same core wound, same direct issue, same I'm not worthy. Same, that little thing that keeps mm. always coming back is the same loop through mm. all your stories. That's what you want to get. And you can find it because it's somewhere it's seated here again mm-hmm. and you uh, activated it. Now, there's also ways to remove. Obviously, there is quite a lot of benefit once you start to understand more of these things. You do inevitably kind of want to peel away those things and you get you do want to look deeper. And 
you know, I do work like that. I have colleagues that do work like that. Akashic work is really valuable in understanding more about galactic past, eighth dimensional work. So these things are very um, valuable. I, I do interdimensional work, which is take, you know, goes into a lot of past lives, into things that we're holding, but also into just what you're carrying now, because it doesn't matter to us, the past, unless you're still holding it. The only mm. reason we're looking at the past is because you're still holding a story from the past. So the goal is to rem remove your own energy from that story, bring yourself back. So the story can, in essence, be gone. Re it, loses, it loses all that. It actually yeah. disappears. The story's yeah. gone. You bring your own energy out of the story, your mm. spirit self, like when I'm doing retrieval work it actually is like that like a spirit so i'm we're retrieving the spirit out of the story healing it with the input of what you need if you believe that it's all my fault and you're blaming that's how that story is still sitting there mm -hmm. see and so you have to actually forgive mm -hmm. and go right i'm gonna say it's not my fault mm -hmm. i'm forgiven i have redemption until i've made that choice within myself that story can't be released so that's how we release the stories mm -hmm. and then release our energy so we can now come back into zero point. So now that past moment means nothing to us anymore. Story's gone. Whew. We can always call back an unworthiness, call back something. Because we base, and that's how I'm saying we're doing it to ourselves. I activate. If I go, oh, I really suck. Uh, I just literally like, go, tch, tch, tch. I just locked some things on myself by even saying that. Mm -hmm. I've locked myself or I've given power to a negative program that I might be running. So therefore, it is my responsibility because I am doing that to mm. myself versus stopping that pain loop or making another choice to go, wait, catch, catch, catch yourself myself before you and say make that. another choice because right. I am in charge of this body vessel. Mm -hmm. If somebody had power over you, mm -hmm. then that makes you a victim. Right. Oh, absolutely. Right. So nobody yeah. has power over my experience. Right. So inevitably, I have to be responsible for my entire experience. That doesn't mean I'm not playing with doesn't mean I don't have. Well, I'm responsible for my existence, but I, I happen to be in a room full of a lot of hardware. There's locks. There's I don't know how to get out of this room, <laughs> but here I am. So I better figure it out and figuring it out. I want. Ooh, that leads me to another thing. So I don't want to get confused. That brings us back yeah. to reason and passion. Figuring it out isn't done with our head. When I say that, I mean, let's start out figuring it out because that mm -hmm. kind of brings us into reason and the head. But what we really want to do is tune into source channel. So when I stop having to figure it out and then I, I just allow that I want to connect to source, I want to be in knowingness, I want to be supported and held by the universe, I'm choosing, yes, show me the way. Yes. So you're really setting an intention opening up to understanding something so that you can shift that energy Correct. rather than sitting there thinking and thinking and thinking, oh, why did, why did this happen? Why did that happen? Which really gets us nowhere with the thinking, thinking, thinking. It's more about, okay, I want to understand this. And I set that intention to understand this and trust that my higher self is going to be able to give that information <coughs> to me in some way that I'll, I'll get it. So, absolutely yeah because the thing is see our mind well it's attached to our ego and my yeah. I'm just thinking 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 my mind thinks it knows a lot and this gets us to reason if we're sitting in reason and go back to that vibrational chart of we've talked about in the past which is the vibration of emotions so, and we want to mm -hmm. kind of rise into this up. fifth dimensional energy fifth dimensional energy starts in the 500s and sets why there's and so that love is the beginning of that. Then actually you rise up pieces, you know, at about six hundred. So, um, but right before love is at four ninety nine is reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So making the jump from that three D place to that five D place means we have to get through our reason. So if we're giving the reins to our mind and saying, Hey mind, you're gonna help me figure this out, it's happy to help you, but guess where it's gonna take you? Four ninety nine. It can't go high it's like, yeah, it's ego still there and it's still navigating and, and it thinks it knows. And mm -hmm. it thinks it knows, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's how we go, no, and that gets us back to this equinox. What is this about? We want to release where we give the mind like assumptions, opinions. It's like, yeah, it no, okay, well, it tells me that, so I guess that's what it is. No, no, no. Let's throw that out. Source channel. 
let me just drop into receiving. I really don't know. I don't know, and I want to know, and I, I want to be led and guided, and I have now an open. In order for me to be water, I need to be empty my cup. Right, I need to so I can be filled and so I can see and so I can allow. So I have to empty and be willing to say, you know, I really don't know. Anything's really possible, actually. There's a lot of things I'm hearing about out there. For instance, right now in the world, I could say, you know, I really, how can I, sitting here on an island, actually think I know what's happening in the Ukraine, for instance? Mm -hmm. How do I know? I can read a million journals. I could tell you stats from a million smart people, but I still can't really tell you that you I really know. don't know. I really don't know. Right. So it's, it's really very egoic of me to think that I, I know. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would prefer to go, you know, I'm really open to hearing about all these different possibilities. And mm -hmm. maybe things aren't what I think. Or, maybe right. I don't. It's not based on I know so many things about what I believed in his story, history. Right. But hmm, maybe that wasn't it either. But in order right. for me to jump to wonder and kind of this opening, I have to be willing to let go of what I think I know. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us, that's a lot. We think we know a lot. We gotta well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I feel the past couple of years were, was really a test for us in that way you know we all went through the past two years of pandemic and everything that went along with that yet each of us have a different experience of it and there were things that we heard and then there were things that we felt and if you were able to uh, know yourself uh, and i it reminds me of uh kumu Raylene years ago mm. her fa my favorite That's thing so. she used to ask everybody was how well do you know yourself mm -hmm. And that's really what all of this comes down to is how well do you know yourself? Because when you know yourself, even when something outside of you is telling you something, if your body and your intuition is telling you something else, that's what matters. Not what the information is, not what is being barked at you or told to you or uh, given to you. It's really what, what, is, what is your intuition and what does that feel like in your body? Is it something that you feel? I get a lot of, a lot of uh, chicken skin, goose bumps, truth bumps, whatever we want to call them. That is always very physically confirming for me to know that, okay, I'm on, a, I'm on the track I want to be. And if that's not happening, I may be thinking a bit too much or uh, I'm, I'm not in that intuitive place that I want to be. Mm. And you, before you say anything, mm -hmm. you, you said some things before that I wanted to ask you about because you use words and I'm not sure other folks know what they are. Do you want a piece of paper? I do because then I'm gonna, you're going to ask me something else. I'm going to forget what I was going to say. Oh, no, uh, I'll just, oh, yeah, yeah go I'm ahead. Write down what you want to say. Okay. All right. So you used um, the words source channel, something I haven't heard anyone use before. And I'd like to ask you, what that means to you. I can make assumptions, but I'd rather uh, you would say, what does source channel mean? Okay, good question. Um, well, you've never heard anyone say it before because I probably made it up. <laughs> I love That's making That's where the great stuff words. comes from. Yeah, so source channel <laughs> to me just means what I've been saying a lot, these shows, and I maybe tuned into that, is be connected to nothing except for the God of your heart and the earth, the earth being our like kind of, you know, your disposal system, compost system. Compost it back to the earth because we're all part of the earth, right? So we compost our energies, emotions when we need, have, are having sadness, pain, troubles. We, we obviously can't, you know, we have to process emotion, but how we process that is, it means a lot. So we want to be connected to ourselves, processing that energy out and down our own grounding cords and grounding or grounding tree roots, you might imagine, so that you're composting that energy and you're connected to the earth field and connected to the God of your heart and nothing else. And that might think, well, what else would I be connected to? Well, gosh, a whole lot. So that gets into the left and the right, which kind of brings me into one of the things you were talking about, listening to other people, mm -hmm. um, taking things in from others. So whenever we do that, if let's say, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, I really I have to do that because, uh, you know, I'm a 
I don't know. I'm I'm a janitor, so I ha- I don't know. We we put a lot have of have to like a just the way you say it. It's kind of a lower vibe. It already have feels to. yeah. Whatever. Oh, I have to go. Uh, I because have to take so the trash so out today. Me that that's the way you do it. So yeah. this is how we do the paperwork. I have to do it this. I prefer to do it another way, but I do it this way because Susie Q told me, and I'm supposed to do it like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever. That's a little hook of energy, which just. We talked about this last time. Mm. It's just like a little USB. It's just a little like clink. I just hooked in to their feed of what, you know, and their voice might even come in while I'm doing stuff, right? You might hear someone's voice telling you you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You're hooking into that person and their whole trip. So it's like, thank you. I don't need your information. I would like to connect to source channel only, meaning I'm connected to the God of my heart and nothing else. I'm not listening to what Isla thinks I should do with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to what the God of my heart thinks I should do with myself. And I'm allowing myself to bypass the mind. And and this gets into kind of this high heart is I'm allowing source to be my guide and then let my heart lead. Now this is huge because this is where we're going as a people is we're going out of this 3D um, which to me is more like competition, right? You know, you know mm. there's competitive reality to a five-dimensional, more in harmony. From we're moving together, we're work, we're co-creating, we're moving into a co-creative reality. So to move into that co-creative reality, we have to inevitably let go mm-hmm. of these thought patterns. Yeah, so while you were talking, I was thinking, <coughs> you were saying we don't necessarily want to listen to what somebody else has to say to us. and uh, Not let to listen. Not, uh, I don't want to say don't listen to people's thoughts and opinions, but yeah. I mean be courted energetically into it, which means it has bearing on how I feel about myself. Okay, so, so I want to kind of differentiate yeah. for people who are listening out there because I'm somebody who... I do well to process with other people. And one of the things I've learned is to be mindful of who I process what with. So if I'm working on an idea of something I want to create, I'm not going to share it with someone I know is 99% in their head and will give me their logical response because that's not really what I want. That's not what I need. What I need is someone who can also be intuitive and say, well, I get a good feeling about this because of blah, blah, blah. And then it's just information for me to take back and like you say, connect with my source and then make my decisions from there. So I do like, I do feel there's value for us to interact with one another. It's just know who you're interact with, interacting with and why, what you, what you're looking for or and sometimes it's just to hear yourself talk. I know sometimes for me, I have something to say and the other person wants to fix it. And I'm like, no, 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 I just needed to get that out. So be it clear. Helps one reflect. That's really Th- great. Yeah. It's awareness and intention about why you're talking to someone. Because a lot of yeah. times what people do do is they just tell each other all the things that happened wrong today so that we can just brood in that for a little while. And that's not productive energy. It actually just breeds more of that and you yeah. haven't helped each other yeah you just you know joined each other in the misery for a minute <laughs> commiserate you know, like commiserated for a second <laughs> that's not one of those higher vibrations i don't <laughs> see it up here but it's yeah. definitely not up at the 700 level right right so you yes being intentional about because again you're creating when you speak like I, you know holding space for one another like you know mm. saying hey what's e- better to do or or can be more serving i should say is is that, you know, to say, Isla, I have something on my mind. Could you just hold space with me? I just need to get off my chest, talk, you know, kind of hear it myself. If you have any, if you have any guidance on it, I'm happy to, I'd love to hear it, but I just yeah. need to talk. See, that kind of sets the stage. You allow space to be, oh, she can know, oh, I'm just holding space for her. She doesn't need me to fix this. Right. So asking for what we want yeah. is really important in communication, right? So to say, let's say in our partnerships, we often don't do that. We don't say, hey, can you just listen to me? I just need you to hold space. I actually don't want you need you to fix it or anything. I just want to be heard for a second. Are you open to that? That feels different than if I just go into my spiel because all of a sudden 
you know, I want to help people all the time. Right. So, so they may be trying to fix something. I literally yeah. want to fix it. I mean, well, well, I, how can I help? What should I do? Right. right. So to just be able to give each other the freedom to hold space gets people all mm. off the hook so we can be more present with each other and realize I can just be present. I don't have to have any answers or feel, do anything right now. Right. Like to be able to be present for another person. And that, and so being present with someone and having connection, communication, engaging and awareness and tension is awesome and amazing. That's why we're here, right? right? We get to do this. But so what we're talking about is more the parts that allow you to be really whole in within yourself so that you can go out and create and you, and we can commune with others in a place of cooperation, in a place of unity and awareness and intention and really enjoy those those opportunities. Yeah. Right? That yeah. can actually be really enjoyable and fun. And well, and, and ki- it's kind of liberating, really, when you were talking about if somebody, if, if you come to me and you say, I just want to really get some stuff out. I don't really need you to do anything. I, I, that That's pretty liberating for me on the yeah. other side and then if if something's bubbling up for me while after you're done I might I can say something's you know in, intuitively I feel some energy around this do you want to hear anything and you can say no I really don't you know thanks anyway but I really just needed to talk so it's that communicating about what you, first knowing what you need what you want and then communicating it to whomever you're you're talking to rather than just blabbing about what somebody did today that pissed you off because then you're just replaying a negative story and it's bringing that negativity back into your into you if it if it was gone it's back (laughs) and if it's not gone now you made it worse right it's just like a movie you're playing that movie and now you're dragging your friend into your movie too (laughs) so nice job way to go (laughs) (laughs) all right let's take a break (laughs) we'll be right back hold on Hop into spring with the Shop and Go event at St. Augustine's Church in Kapa'au on Saturday, March 19th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Check out the ethnic foods and baked goods, plants and produce, household goods, holiday items and costumes, and of course, the thrift shop and boutique. Please wear your mask and keep a safe distance. Plan to shop and go. No seating will be provided. To donate, call 808-889-5390. 808-889-5390. That's Saturday, March 19th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. at St. Augustine's Church. Aloha, Connie Ann Wahini. This is Doug in your ear. I am the newest bearded DJ here. I play classic rock and roll and some blues every Thursday afternoon from 4 to 6 p.m. at radio station KNKR LP 96.1 FM Kohala The tide rushes in and washes my castles away Then I'm really not so sure which side of the bed I should lay Welcome back. This is Intuitive Talk Story with Isla Allgood and... Mikkel Anna. And it's March 16th, 2022 at 3.37 p.m. And we have a caller who wanted to share something. Uh, are you there? Oh, you, you need a... Yes. Head, hold on just a minute. Mikkel has to put her headphones on. Okay. There we go. Okay. Go hey. ahead. Yeah, hi. I just wanted to uh, say, uh, really encourage you guys to do the live shows because... Uh, as you had mentioned a little bit ago, you're in the present when you do the live shows. Your encores are great, but it's just something about you two being in the present on your show that we really appreciate listening to. Well, thank you so much, Pete. And this is Pete from Colorado, and you're there with somebody else? 
Yes, yeah, my partner, Kathy. Kathy, well, thank you for t- for listening. Thank you, Pete and Kathy. And you know, we actually just increased to two times a month. Thanks to you guys. Because we're listening to our <laughs> listeners, and we're doing two live shows now a month. And those replays that get played on the radio and also are available like on our channels and Spotify or iTunes are great for people to have reference material so you, you know not everyone can make it right when we're here but we so appreciate that you love to be with us here live and thank you so much for tuning in and is there anything else you'd love to do is there anything you'd like to ask while you're while you're here on the line well um <laughs> i was thinking you had mentioned this too a co-worker and i got into a conversation today stemming from our past religious upbringing and our our present beliefs beyond religion um, in just spirituality and life and death and what happens after life with the, with death. And I came from the perspective of uh, death brings you into another beyond, whatever that be for whoever and whenever that happens. And he was of the opinion that Death is just a finality. Then you are done. And it was interesting because at the end we came to the agreement that we really don't know for sure. And so whoever goes first to the two of us gets to come back and tell the other person what we found out. Oh, I like oh, that. Well, I hope that works out. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. great. I like that. That That's... is that is great. It's true. You know, it's it's okay. You bring up a great point is that we don't actually all have to agree. And we can live in unity and harmony and not agree on everything. Mm-hmm. We can have different perceptions of reality because, again, we're all in our own movie. So we are experiencing it differently. Yeah. There are different characteristics that play, upbringing, uh, experiences that, that mold our, what we see and how we see it. So everyone's experience is completely of value to themselves and uh, and is valid. Yeah, yeah. It's not about right and wrong. It's just about knowing what's true for you and being able to talk like that's wonderful so exactly. good for you yeah, exactly. i love it yeah. i love yeah. it so thank you very much for being live thank you thank you so much thanks love for calling you. take okay. care aloha. aloha aloha well that was fun thank Beautiful. you Pete. i love it thank you peter and kathy from yes. colorado that's actually my hometown yes it is so that's fun i have uh, been here in hawaii though for oh this year it's gonna be 24 years wow 24 years, amazing, almost a Time quarter flies. of a century. <laughs> Holy cow. Yes, but that brings us into getting out of the head and into the heart, mm. which we've been talking, you were talking about commiserating, talking about these things. But I want to give you another perspective too, like how we might approach an activity. So let's say, for instance, when I go out gardening, right? Sometimes when we're in, and this goes back to left, right brain, because it's a great way to kind of think of it, because as we are moving into this cooperative fifth dimensional energy, I think of that as being a whole-brained activity. It means we're activating everything, opening everything, and we're allowing movement within the whole body vessel. So that kind of, you can think of that as like, how am I approaching this? The old way is like, I need to have the list, everything on there, I need to make sure exactly what I need, da 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 And in some cases, that's really important to do. Let's say I'm doing a catering gig, I better make sure I have everything I need. I'm not saying throw out the left, the left brain. Yeah. I'm just saying, we're doing balance. So I might have an idea of things I need to get done, but I can approach, and this is where you play with it, where you can play with it. Obviously, certain things you don't have that luxury to maybe have space, an hour, but you need to give yourself time. That is Mm -hmm. a thing about magical experiences. Mm -hmm. You can't really like order them up real fast. Like it can happen between 10 and 10, 15. (laughs) That won't work. (laughs) Well, you, you, you I know. mean, sometimes, but you just, you got to give a little space. Yeah. So for yeah. instance, if I'm going to go out and garden and let's say I want to plant something, I might have a few list of things I want to get done, but I want to allow myself the space to tune in. So this means doing my activity from a different brain. Instead of thinking about what it needs to be done, I might just be feeling the plant. Oh, look at the roots. Oh, look at her little leaves. Oh, look, I'm going to put her in here. Hey, you're going to, this soil is a little intense, but I think you could do it. I'm just feeling into the plant. Oh, she probably needs some water. See, oh, I better water her now. She's feeling like she wants some water. Oh, this little plant next to it. Now it feels like it wants a little bit of weeding. Oh, and here's another little plant. You'd like a little help too, wouldn't you? See, that wasn't on my plan to help those other little plants. I was just going to plant this one. 
But now that I'm tuning in, I realize, oh, oh, there's some things happening here because I'm listening. I'm co-creating now. See, now I'm not just getting it done. I'm choosing to co-create with my experience, which makes my experience of being out in that land environment feel different than if I was just deeply focused with my tools working my butt off, which I've also done. But it feels different when I allow that co-creative process. And actually, the weeds kind of help me pull them. I must say, for all my Hawaii people, try it out, which is like, talk to your land. When you're there, you're like, you know, this. everybody gets a place. Everybody gets somewhere to be. But Mm -hmm. you guys just don't get to be right here because this is where the coleuses are going to (laughs) hang. And this is where the mulberry gets to be. And Saranam cherries are over here. So... You know, and the bela has to be here. So even though I love my running hono hono grass because it's medicinal and has great value, I don't want you everywhere, okay? So I love you. I want you around. You have a place here. We all have a place here. I see you. I value you. I want you here. And now I put my hono hono grass. You get you get to hang out here. You're all good over there. Try not go over there. See, now everything lets me work with it. They see the vision. We're all co-creating. Oh, I get it. You're not just mad rush going through here. You want, I see what you're saying. You're going to make it nice for us. All right, we're, we're doing this together. We are now in a co-creative thing. I'm having fun with my plants, talking, experiencing them, and, and that makes it a whole nother thing altogether. Right, and, and you're, you're working with what is rather than forcing what you think it should be or want it to be. You have an intention and then you are willing to co-create in the moment. Yes. And that, you know, that's with the plants, it can be with anything. And sometimes the other day I, uh, the dog, my dog walked in front of me and I walked into his foot with my foot and my little toe is not very happy right now. (laughs) So that kind of took care of what I was going to do. Like I put my shoes on to go for a walk that day anyway, but it didn't happen and hasn't happened. So it changed my schedule for the next days for however long. I don't know. And rather than getting like really upset about it, I'm like, okay, here's an opportunity. This is going to make me slow down, make some other choices. And that's okay. I wasn't I wasn't upset at all. I mean, I got upset because it hurt, but then I wasn't, I was just kind of like, okay, all right, plan B, what's that going to be like and what's that going to bring me? And it's, it's been, it's been easy. You know, it's, to me, it gets really hard when I push up against and try to force what I want because the universe doesn't really like that. So no, I'm be met like with water. resistance. Yeah. Now's the time to be water. We're all asked being asked to be water, Mm -hmm. be formless, be like water, allowing the flow of what's coming into your field, listening to what's being presented, being present with what's happening here and now. It's spirit works in the moment, right? You can't plan that. You just allow. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's like, you know, a lot of times people have said in the many things that I do, they think, God, you don't, you're just going to do that event. You're just going to do that. Yeah. We don't even have any of it to get. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, you know, I know, I know. We can make it happen. But literally, I, it was so fun. Like one of the last, one of the events I did not that long ago, maybe a year or so ago. But it was one of those things where it was so beautiful for those who were around me to witness the magic of it because it was freaking them out. Like, like you know, like. Because you didn't have it all yeah, planned like and figured out. Planned, and, no, but yeah. literally everything showed up. Like literally yeah. someone gave, you know, my dear friend, my dear sister gave me catering equipment, uh, you know, all these beautiful models, just everything connected. Yeah, and it yeah. literally just was presented. And I just said, oh, I guess this is why I'm here. You're probably supposed to be doing this thing I'm doing. Like, yeah. I, I was willing to go, oh, I know I'm here for something. Oh, that's why. So see, right. for me, I'm always, I know everywhere I go, there's a reason. So I'm, I'm kind of always like, hmm, what am I here for? What's, what's your life for me here? What am I here to do? And then, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm done. I can feel it. Mm-hmm. And then off I go. So it's like we're tuning into our flow, our own energy. And, and and we're allowing others to do the same. And this also means not taking things personal. In mm-hmm. order for us to allow each other to be in our flow, we have to be good at not taking things personal. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, let's say I'm living, we're living together. Well, sometimes being, I'm in my flow. I can't answer your question about, I don't know, the the, the 
the bills to, you know, electricity. I'm in, I'm like in a whole other space. So that means communicating in our home space, creating more awareness too, right? And I have to, you know, I, we have to do these things I, with my mom right now. Right. She's, you know, she's here with us and she, poor thing, has to deal with my schedule all the time right. and what I'm doing and work around those things. So we have to let each other know, like right now, I'm not available to talk about A, B, C, D, E. Right. Let's give each other time. Like, hey, maybe would you be available I need in to 30 do that. minutes? Yeah. I need to speak about X. Or is that work for you? Right. Because we're all in our flow and we want to allow each other to be in our own energy and not like just because you're here, I now have to deal with answering every question you have all day long well, or vice versa. Right. right? Because we're being respectful. But you have to know, <laughs> and this comes back to how well do you know yourself? Because one of the things I've come to see is that when I'm winding down for the night, getting ready for bed, I do not want to have very emotional or very um, intellectual conversations because that's not going to help me go to sleep. Sure. And it's taken me a long time to get to that place that I understand that about myself. So then I can convey that to the people that I live with. Like, okay, 10 o'clock at night is not a time to get into, like open up a big conversation because I'll, I'll be up till six in the morning. <laughs> So I and and if you don't know those things about yourself, then it's hard to communicate that to the people that you live with. So it's that's where it's valuable to know what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And like you say, with your cohabitating, I can't talk at that uh, about maybe logical things right now because I'm in this other headspace of session and you work pretty deeply with people <laughs> um, on a spiritual level and and. But you could do that maybe it, in a couple hours. Right, exactly. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be coming out of that in a couple I'll hours. That brain and, and then like we can talk. Yeah. Can you wait? Right. I hope. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Giving each other the giving each other the space so that we can, because mm. we're not all the same and we don't mm -hmm. all navigate the same way at the same time. So we need to right. give a flexibility and allow so we can meet each other where mm -hmm. we are. Right. Mm -hmm. Right and be more available to one another. There was another word you said before that um, I don't know that everybody listening knows what it means or uh, connects with it. And it's the word Akashic. Mm. I remember hearing Akashic records, reading about them. I started reading this stuff when I was 25. So that's a whole bunch of years ago. And uh, we were just talking about someone who does Akashic readings that we've both uh, met and talked with and so what does that mean to you when you hear the word akashic what are you well, what's your understanding two things i'll say about that um so to my understanding of that is the akashic field is the, an eighth dimensional field and it's where the records of all th all things are held so, so it's, it's like the mainframe computer it's like the of, mainframe. of it's like a of huge of library of everything okay so and there are people who um read the records i work a little bit in those realms but i work in different aspects of that i don't really do that specific thing yeah that's a real specific reading and you know going into those specific things is specific so um it I do have a dear friend. In fact, in fact, it's funny you bring this up <laughs> because you did actually mention, so who the person you're speaking of is a dear friend of mine whom I brought here to Hawaii, yes. which is how Isla met. You Jason, got to meet him yeah. and, and is going to be coming back soon. Is and he? I had this wild idea and I would actually love if out there listeners that are here could actually be here with us in person if we did, because we've been talking about this, we might want to do like a live intuitive talk story with special guest yeah. Jason, our a dear friend and colleague, yes. uh, and Akashic worker, so uh, he's Akashaman. So he's he's amazing. Uh, shout out to you if you're listening. And um, but anyhow, so if you're interested in doing something like that, are you willing to put out your email? Yes, absolutely. Would yeah, you yeah. go ahead and email? Yeah, you could email me. Um, e a l g o o d e all good at gmail dot com if that's something. And you also can find both Mikkel and I on Facebook. YouTube. You can direct message YouTube and uh, yes, we were thinking Mikkel about something where people can uh, write down questions so that they have uh, they can either write them down or verbalize them. Some people are shy; they'd rather not be 
you know, they don't want to be known that that was their question, but that's okay too. It's just really a point of uh, jumping off point for us that we would have pe questions that we could speak to. It's not necessarily answer. It's about speaking to it and having a conversation with other people in the community. Yeah, a kind of it's an interactive, intuitive yes. talk story where yes. you could ask on the spot or not. Put it in a hat and we'll you know talk about it. Something like that. It yes. could be really fun and exciting. So I we're just putting so. that out there. Let us know what you think. Yeah, and we'll see what the universe wants to do with that. But Akashic <laughs> work is, in essence, um, really looking at where you really like what you're working with. What kind of my superpowers, like what am I, energy am I working with? Where am I really my first incarnations? Peter, you brought up that great conversation. So yes. I'm going to make my view known right now. I believe very strongly that we are definitely not finalized, that we have many, many incarnations and that there's many, many, many stories. So Akashic work is the exploration of some of your stories and looking at where your first incarnations may have been in the stars. Now that gets galactic, yes. right? So that's, that's been a very interesting aspect of the Akashic reading for me because I... Didn't really think much about that, but I have been looking at the stars since I was <laughs> able Good. to do that. So there was, uh, and and also when when you have that sort of a reading, it's really it's up to the person to say that resonates for me or it doesn't. It doesn't mean that you have to just take it all. It's Absolutely. take it and do what would help you. I mean, I used to do this when I did uh, psychic readings with people. It's like. You take it home with you, and then you feel into what is right for you. Well, that's in alignment with what we started out with, which is do not tap into anyone's information other than source channel. Mm -hmm. So absolutely everything in your movie, regardless of what it is, is mm. filtered through that. Meaning anything, I, even though I have an amazing conversation with the most amazing person on the planet, I'm still going to go thank you. And I'm not just going to make that my reality. I'm going to yes. process it through my source channel mm -hmm. and allow myself to understand what does that mean to me and what do I resonate with and what do I not resonate with. So this comes back to that's a foundational piece. Mm -hmm. So it's foundational. The Akashic. No, going back <laughs> to back to the fact that I am uh, everything comes through source energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about spirit stuff or this. Like we almost did like what we, well, over here. Remember this, but it's, we're all inside that, right? Yeah, yeah. We're inside the experience of I'm responsible. Yeah. I'm creating. Yeah, and and people, um, I I've had the experience where people are often will give their power away to someone they consider more spiritual or more more connected. And, uh, you know, year, for years and years I did uh, spirit circles and seances. And I, uh, the power dynamic there was very interesting. People were pretty quick to give their power to the person at the front of the room rather than getting the information for themselves and checking in to see what was true and what wasn't true for them. And it's something just to really be aware of when you're when you're out there interacting with other people. Who, if if somebody tells you that they have they have a better connection to source than you, that's not somebody you want to really uh, put any energy into because that's not it's just not true. Well, in general, back to don't give your power <laughs> away to anyone. It doesn't matter who they are. Gink, gink. So yeah. we want to just always we're checking in with ourselves because everyone's got a story and everyone's got an opinion, right? Back yeah. to opinions. We're letting go of those assumptions, right. letting go of those. And so we can't yeah. assume someone knows more than us. We can't go with someone's opinion about what they think right. because that leads us out of source channel. Mm -hmm. So what I love to do, because the mind is so tricky, it wants to take you down so many different versions of a thought mm -hmm. and details of a thought. But if you give it a foundational thought, it just busts the entire 40 minutes of a thought. So your mind... Give can, an example of I, that. I just yeah. did. Yeah. Like, for instance, if uh, we're not giving our power away... To, if there's nobody out there and it's my responsibility and I want to be connected to source and nothing else, well, then that uh, whatever that person just told me is only there for me to reflect upon and process through mm. source channel. So I don't have to do any thinking or waste time 
pondering or giving my energy away to this and having a, a discrepancy or an internal, you know, uh, about any of it because right. I can just go back to, right, but that's not what I do. I don't give my power away. I'm connected to source. I can, great, take all that. Oh, that's very interesting. I'm going to process that. I mean, I don't really know. I'm open right. to see what right. I think about it. I'm open to feel it yeah. and experience it. And then some things I'm like, yeah, I really feel that. That one, not so much. I'm really liking that, not so much that. You know, we're feel into it because what works for the goose doesn't work for the gander. I mean, you know, you say tomato, I say tomato. I could be, <laughs> let me, I could rattle off a bunch of these. But we all yeah. are different. So what works for me isn't going to say work for you. Our body vessel, just before I got here, I was at home. I'm telling my mom, hey, I love this crack cell cholera, cholera. I always say that name wrong. Cholera. Cholera. <sighs> cholera. And it's a dark, dark, dark green. Okay. Mm. My body loves this stuff. My mom doesn't test for it. She's like, my body doesn't want it. I'm like, that's yeah. so crazy. I mean, how does yeah. your body not like it? My body loves it. Well, yeah. we're just different. Yeah. We just have different needs. And that's okay. So it's not, right. there's, and that gets into fifth dimensional frequency. There is no better than, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There just isn't. So I like dark greens. She doesn't. Well, I'm not better than her and she's not better than me. We just like different stuff. Right. And she has, she's, you know, Isla's really, you know, she's uh, one way and I'm another. You know, we, but we are all united in that. So this goes into when we get out of our head, which is the opportunity, you're doing that to bring in that balance of the, the father, mother, and sun or the Christic energy or the love, light, and grace or the alpha, omega, and mm -hmm. the eternal one, the zero point, try, however you explain that, Father, Mother, Holy Spirit, however you, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, however you see that trinity, there are many ways to say that, but in essence, it's the energy of balance of coming into harmony with our divine self in our alpha and omega or divine masculine and feminine and the Christic light of all that is, the zero point, like kind of the manifestation of the two birthing would be is like the Christ, the Christ energy, the Christic energy that flows through all things. So that three is what we're allowing harmony to come into our being. In order for that to happen, well, the ego can't be in charge. So the mind's not in charge. Source is in charge. And source now means I get to navigate. Once I get into loving myself, and then I feel like, gosh, you know, I'm loving myself. I'm not better than, I'm not, I'm not seeing any of those comparisons. I'm not judging. I'm not activating that. Now I'm like, wow, it's starting to get fun. Now I'm seeing, you know, we're all in this together. And when we feel into unity, you know, what happens is, well, if everything is one thing, well, then I care about everything because it's all one thing. So it's not outside of me because it, well, in some way it is me. So how could I not care for that person on the corner or that could I not care for Isla sitting here across from me? How could I not care for every being in my field when we are in fact one another? And so that gets ignited. And in that ignition, ignition, we get to ignite our high heart. Now, your high heart is your eighth chakra. And it is, I feel like, you know, I want to say you can feel it sitting in front of you, like uh, I kind of like in between, like above your heart and your right by your throat. It's kind of this resonant field, like the opening, like when you see that, ha, that kind of feeling, ah, it's like right there. And it's like, think of source channel now is going through the, your head, but in your heart, you're activating God's love, beloved infinite creator through your infinite heart to expand and let that navigate what I then experience. I use my, then use your brain because it's got all that info and reference material and it's really good at figuring out equations and it can do these, and it, you know, it can do a lot of things and there's stuff in there that I can access. But the high heart, God, source, channel, living light, however you like to describe your connection to infinite source, that is what's leading the experience so that the high heart, because in the knowingness with the fact that, what does that mean? Foundational belief is, well, it's all one. So if, if I believe in unity, then see, there is nothing else. The, the heart I'm leading, I'm allowing source to guide the experience. Mm -hmm. There's really no separation. Right. Yeah. It's the opposite of separation is unity. 
Well, we're going to unify and and close our show today. It's 402 here on March 16th, 2022. And uh, this will be replayed next week and we'll be back uh, the first Wednesday of April. Wonderful. And before we part, I yes. just want to say to everyone out there, leading up to this equinox, you know, go ahead and if I suggest if you want to participate, uh, is um, go ahead and write down your limiting beliefs, things you come to mind, assumptions, opinions, and you want to just write them all down with the intention that I'm ready to let these go. I'm ready to, this is coming to my conscious mind. I don't really want to activate this anymore because I want to experience more joy, more harmony. I would like to experience resonating more from my heart space. So you can burn all that and just have a little your own little prayer. Let it go. Take deep breaths. Breathe deeply and invite the opening of your heart. Invite that connection to divine love, Holy Spirit, grace, God, however you say that, living light around you, which is always around you. Breathe in the love and know I am that I am. Thank you. Have a beautiful, beautiful day in living light. Aloha. Aloha. Until next time, everyone.